What's going on y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today we got another OG conversation. I had the opportunity to kick it with Celestial Gaming Goddess. We sat on a Skype call and we talked about everything about black representation of gaming, the underrepresentation of women in gaming. And I thought it was a really dope conversation to have and I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, guys, don't forget, if you wanna be a part of this series, just reach out to me, hit me on Instagram, hit me on Twitter, uh, hit me on Twitch, YouTube, whatever works and I'll get back to you. But without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Yo, what up, y'all? Olympus Gaming back again with another conversation vid. Today, I have Celestial Gaming Goddess. What up to you? Hello, and thank you so much for even having me here. I'm really appreciative for this opportunity. Yo, 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 it's crazy. So, so that is an interesting name. Where, where, <laughs> where, did, where did that name come from? Celestial Gaming God. That's a mouthful. Where, where did it come from? What's the origin of that? A random name generator. Oh, okay. <laughs> at, least, at least you're honest. I was, I was waiting for like a crazy story about yo, I, <laughs> yo, I had this dream or something like that, and it just spoke to me. But you said a I random name generator. <laughs> yes. Um. So I am. It ties into I am African and Jamaican. So I am also into like goddesses and gods, into celestial and ethereal beings, and I'm also into gaming. So I kind of just threw a bunch of words into a random name generator. It was just, I just kept clicking generate until something just spoke to me. I was like, huh, I like this one. Celestial Gaming Goddess. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. So you just, like you said, you try to put all the things that you were interested in and mm -hmm. just threw them in a generator and just kept hitting generate, generate, generate. So you found one that just really stuck and just rolled with that. Yes. Okay. I like it. That's uh, that's dope. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well then. So going back, you obviously stream on Twitch and you're into gaming. Kind of going through your Instagram, I see that you post, you know, gaming clips and you know, Pokemon picks and things like that. What got you into gaming? Like, at what age did you start gaming? And what were some of the games or consoles that you played growing up? Mm, if I can vividly remember, I would say it was around the age of two. I used to play on my older brother's um, Atari handheld, and it was just something he gave me so I wouldn't bother him while he was playing his PlayStation 2. But it was just kind of like, as I was playing on the handheld, and I looked up, and I seen him playing big screen TV, and he was playing The Great Adventures of Frogger off oh, of wow. PlayStation 2. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> I want to I wanna play that. So after that, I played on the PlayStation 2 for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated, and my brother got me my own because he got tired of sharing mm -hmm. <laughs> his controller with me. Yeah. And then I played on a Game Key Color, a Game Boy Advance, the Advance SP, a PSP, wow, a Nintendo Wii, an Xbox, an Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, yeah, PlayStation 4, an Xbox One. Oh, and wow. <laughs> so it sounds like you really kind of got into it um, a little bit later than me, but you kind of got into it right around the PS2 GameCube era, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is my, which I always say is my golden era for video games a lot of people say it was the sega genesis super nintendo but honestly for me it was the playstation 2 gamecube and game boy advance that really kind of solidified you know the type mm -hmm. of games that i was into whether it was you know final fantasy or kingdom hearts or ratchet and clank or whatever the case is uh those that era of gaming was to me the gold the, the golden era where i really really kind of got really really into video games Okay, so you said that the the PS2 and the you, and of course you had the handheld as well. What mm -hmm. was some of the what was the turning point for you that let you know like yo games are everything? Like what games did you play that just had you like mind blown at that time? I would definitely say it was Kingdom Hearts, um, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Inuyasha, and The Secret of the Curse Mask. That that game right there had my heart and Kirby Air Ride. Kirby Air Ride, just, nice. Mm -hmm. It was just something about watching TV and then being able to play these characters and control them. But not only that, play an immersive story mm -hmm. that captures you and actually makes you connect with the character and make you feel like you're experiencing what they're going through. And it also helps you escape from reality just a bit. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Video games is definitely a, a form of escapism for sure. It is really good that you touched on the story because like in that era, PS2, GameCube, Xbox, that's when we really started to see more story-driven games. I mean, I guess we always kind of had it in the PS1 era with Final Fantasy VII and other RPGs at the time, but seeing it from you know, going from that to a big graphical overhaul and being more immersive. Mm -hmm. I still remember the first time I played Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts, I was just like really, like you said, drawn into the story and just really kind of escaped to those worlds. So I uh, 100% agree with you with that. And the Inuyasha thing, I uh, I remember vaguely <laughs> playing a PS1 fighting game with Inuyasha, but that's pretty much where my video game experience with Inuyasha stops. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back and revisit that. Cool. So you mentioned Yasha, so I assume that usually when you have somebody who's interested in video games, you know, that kind of ties over into anime. So were you also really big into anime back then? Yes, I was. I was very big into anime, mainly because it was the way me and my father bonded. Um, he mainly is the type who watches horror movies, cowboy movies, and anime, mm -hmm. literally in that order. And every time, whenever we were on the couch, we were always watching anime. I never, under I never understood the difference between the cartoon and anime. I knew that there was an art style, and I knew the theme. Mm -hmm. As I got older and I started to dive more into anime, for me, it's kind of the same thing with video games, the immersion and being able to watch stories to help you relate to what you're going through, right. but also just, you know, the ones that are more comical and not so serious. Mm -hmm. I do feel like the tone is definitely more different in anime than it is in American cartoons. Definitely. And, you know, for you, it was, it was your dad. But for me, it was my my cousin who actually went to a high school right around the corner from my grandmother's house. And I remember him coming over after school. And I was in elementary at the time. Mm -hmm. And he used to watch uh, Toonami on Cartoon Network. And that was mm -hmm. kind of like my first. Yeah, that was like my first introduction into stuff like Dragon Ball Z and Tenchi Muyo and Gundam and Inu oh well, Inuyasha was Adult Swim, but Yu Yu Hakusho <laughs> and all these other shows. And you're right. When it comes to anime, it was episodic but it also promoted character development you got to follow these characters from the time that they're kids all the way to their adults and usually yeah these episodes are spread out spread out across years so not only do you feel like you've grown up with the character but you got to see this character grow and develop so on and so forth so that's why anime kind of has that staying power versus something like spongebob or Looney Tunes. it's kind of like one-off stories <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, and then kind of growing up, you know, with these interests in video games and anime, did you run into the issue of finding it hard to connect with other people, at least back then? Because I remember 2005, 2006, even all the way up to like high school, mm -hmm. I know enjoying anime and enjoying these things were definitely not as acceptable as it is today. Mm. Um, it was more of a niche hobby or a niche interest. So did you ever feel that your interests were kind of like had to be suppressed or hidden because it was not the popular thing to like at the time? Yes, I definitely did. Um, growing up, I would definitely say around like middle school and high school, I never was really that vocal about being in the gaming and watching anime because I seen how other people would get bullied for it and I was one of those people that used to Naruto run to the lunchroom <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so after that day I was like you know what I'm not gonna let anybody know what I do at home so I used to just keep it to myself until um as I got older I realized that gaming to me was just more than just a hobby it was something that became a passion of mine and I wanted to be more involved in the gaming community, but at the same time, I had to put myself out there. Yeah. So when it came to me being embracing more of who I am and what I love and also gaming, that's when I started to branch out. But growing up, um, I won't say like I had a lot of negative experience because I did hold it back a bit and nobody really knew, but I would say now I am more embracive of it all yeah 
Yeah. And I think now, like this is way before social media. So I think back then the biggest difference was there was not necessarily a safe space. You know, nowadays, you know, kids yeah. have Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and Reddit communities. Back then there was none of that. So you really kind of felt isolated when it came to like your different interest in anime, you know, video games, things of that nature. And coming from where we come from, if you guys don't know me and Celestia are both from Jacksonville, Florida. So <laughs> I could definitely understand <laughs> that whole everything that I went through coming up in middle school to high school having this particular interest um, just like you my the big I guess the biggest turning point is when I kind of got older I was like you know what there's no reason why I should be able to hide you know the things that I'm interested in like the people who are gonna rock with me are gonna rock with me regardless and if they don't like it well I probably shouldn't be friends with those people anyway so mm. I just honestly stopped caring <laughs> <laughs> So, but now that video games are cool and you know streaming is cool, I have people just hitting me up left and right, asking me all sorts of questions about this stuff. I'm like, bro, like 10 years ago, you had nothing to do with this, so why you want to come in now? <laughs> mm, and it's like um, those people just didn't really know who you really are. Like they didn't get to know you fully because you had to suppress yourself. Um, I would definitely say around of my old group of friends that I had. Um, I couldn't really voice because like, let's say if we're hanging out with their boyfriends or other male counterparts, mm -hmm. if they're talking about video games, I would want to jump in. But it's like as their conversation, I realized that the, um, the females within the group, they were glaring at me. They're saying I'm only doing it for attention. So it's kind of like, all right. So to keep the peace. <laughs> yeah, Ado, you know, it's interesting that I'm you say that because uh, that still goes on today. And I think the term that we use now is called gatekeeping, where mm -hmm. you will have, you know, because the thing about anime, video games, things like that, it's typically portrayed to be male dominant. You know, most of yeah. your most of your major anime characters, when you think of anime, they're male figures, whether it's Goku or Yusuke or like you said, Inuyasha. So it's always kind of put males at the forefront. So. Mm -hmm when you have a female who shows interest in uh, something that is male dominant whether it's sports anime video games whatever the case is you are going to get those looks and you are going to get that kind of like i guess you're going to get people's you know the alerts kind of go up um and then you know with the gatekeeping thing when you have individuals like males questioning females on their knowledge of certain things just off the simple fact that they are female which i think is 100 percent wrong you know i think gatekeeping just needs to die 100 percent but it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how what you just said, what's happening back then, is still prevalent today in this community. Yeah, and it, it's sad, but at the same time, you know, as time changes, things are evolving. So I know, I won't say it it won't go away permanently, but I feel like people are, will be with themselves to where if they're in a group with somebody that does have different interests, instead of shunning them, they will be more accepting of who they are and what they like. Yeah, absolutely. And I always tell my community and people who follow me and who listen to me that, you know, women are welcomed in our community. There is no reason whatsoever why, you know, us as men should feel free should feel threatened, should feel some type of way about women wanting to join into something that they were historically always kind of pushed out of. So I, to me personally, I it's never a, a goal for me if somebody decides to push a woman out of the community because to me that's 100% wrong. And I think gaming and anime and nerd culture in general should be accepting of everyone, whether it's LGBT, mm -hmm. women, men, white, black, doesn't matter. Everybody has a place in this community. So the fact that this is still going on in 2020 is, uh, just mind-boggling to me and it's something i don't stand for so like the a good percentage of my viewers are women and mm -hmm. it is i want them to feel like they have a safe space in my community like i never mm -hmm. want them to feel like this if you know they would get harassed or one of my followers or you know saying crazy things to her like that does not fly with me so yeah i feel like uh you know us as male streamers and you know just men in general in this you know, community, we have to start creating these safe spaces and holding each other accountable for treating women the way that we do within the community. Hmm. I agree with everything that you said, and I really appreciate that you use your platform to vote, to voice that, and to, as you say, hold people accountable. I think that's to me is where it truly lies is holding people accountable because you staying silent is also you being a part of the problem yes um i would i would honestly say for me 
growing up and dealing, I would say in the beginning, the gatekeeping was more from women than it was from men. That's interesting. <laughs> because, um, yeah, like, even though right now I am more female, aspect growing up it was the other way around because um whenever i would be playing with a group of male friends and they invite another woman into the chat she will automatically just disregard me you know mm. and it happened so much that it got to the point where i always felt like am i ever going to find another woman in gaming who I can interact with and who I can just enjoy their company because mm. I never was one to like generalize well just because I had this one experience from her means I'm gonna have the next experience with another woman like this you know very interesting so, yeah it was so, um hmm. what were you gonna say so so you're saying that the toxicity wasn't just from men exclusively, but you're saying that women would also gatekeep or shun other women within the community? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, there are times where um, some women didn't want me to be invited into their voice chats because they felt like I was attention-seeking because when we, hmm. whenever video games brought up, I jump into the I jump into the topic and I really do immerse myself into it because I do love video games. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to speak from their point of view on how they felt, but I can tell that they did feel some type of way towards me. I'm not sure what it was because I didn't know them, but I just knew that from my experience or the times that we had communicated, there was just always some type of tension and I never really understood why. That's intriguing. Okay. Well, see, I, hmm. I'm not a woman, so I'm not going to pretend like I know what that's all about. But uh, it's very <laughs> interesting that you say that because when I look on, you know, and, uh, tr granted, this is just me outside looking in. Mm -hmm. When, you know, you see women, female, you know, streamers, gamers, content creators, from my perspective, it looks like women pretty much stick together throughout, you know, through and through. Like I see a lot of support going on. And then again, that could be just a small demographic, but what you're telling me is that sometimes it's not necessarily an accurate representation of what really goes on behind the scenes or what really goes on between, you know, peer to peer with women. I don't know. There's a whole other side to it. <laughs> Interesting. I, I have experienced it, especially joining like um, a clan full of women. Mm -hmm to get to that generalized, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was always open to the next experience or to another woman who I encountered. But for the most part, men were more welcoming. Like to me, when it came to gaming online, obviously in person, like I said, I didn't express that. But online, I never really had the issue. The main issue I had from men was them believing that I was black because mm -hmm because I quote unquote sounded white, they always believed that I was white. So the main issue that I dealt with men was proving to them that I was black. Cause I would even get called racist and say that wow. I'm trying to pretend that I'm being black or I don't sound black and I never understood that. So that was the issue I dealt with men in gaming. But with women in gaming, okay. it was just more so, oh, well, she's attention seeking. Every time she comes in, she acts like she knows all these games when she really doesn't, this and this and that. Wow. So I experienced it from both, both sides, but I never generalized it. I was just like, you know, this person is who they are. It is what it is. I just know the next person, they could be like that or they may not be like that, but whatever it is, I'm always going to make the best of the situation and just keep going until I get to a place mm -hmm. where I can have that community and I can find that tribe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, wow, okay. So you, you touched on one point and you said with the male side of things, you had to prove to them that you were African-American black. 
Um, where did where do you think that stems from? Because when I hear that, you know, my automatic response is, well, you know, race shouldn't even be a factor. You know, I feel like interest and, you know, passions should not be defined by your race. But, you know, unfortunately, we live in a society where everybody tends to put everybody else in a box. If you're black, you're supposed to only play 2K and Madden. If you're <laughs> <laughs> the generic game. Yeah, yeah. If you're black, you're supposed to love hip hop and you're supposed to like this and you're supposed to be interested in this and you're not supposed to be interested in that. And I saw a lot of that growing up. But um, from the gaming side, I think I was kind of fortunate to where I never really ran into that, at least not directly. So what you're saying is that you have experienced that. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Like, what was it like coming up? We're going to we're going to leave the female part out, but just as a black <laughs> gamer in general coming up in this community. Mm, I would say that it was eye opening for sure. Um, going back to what I said when I experienced the issue with proving that I was black, I would more say it was just more of ignorance because yeah. this was before social media was booming, you mm -hmm. know, so not a lot of the men that I interacted with had a lot of models around them to see that there are black girl gamers out here mm -hmm. so whenever they came across me they would be talking this and this and that and they would be asking like you know what's your ethnicity this and this and that they would expect me to say something but if i say i'm black they'd be like well you don't sound black and i believe it comes from the whole thing that well you know if you if you articulate yourself a certain way then you can't be black because blacks use slang, blacks cuss, they do all this, you know, that's, that's the, um, what's the word? That's the stereotype, you know, right. not saying they don't, but they do, but it's just kind of like, if you articulate yourself, you sound white, which I always hate it because it's like saying like, you know, black people can't be smart. They can't right. articulate themselves well. So that's where I feel like a lot Absolutely. of that stems from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I feel like the gaming industry, you know, we do lack the issue of representation in the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. I know it's unfortunate that a lot of the gaming community or a lot of, you know, um, gamers who don't really have a lot of interactions from black people, when they go to their favorite medium, video games, mm -hmm. the only reference point, at least back then, that they got was, of course, NBA, NFL things, but also uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And I always said that uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, as great of a game that it is, it has done a lot of uh, bad when it comes to black representation in the video game space. Because yeah. there are, I've ran into people who think that CJ is the face of black people. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, but you have to look at it like this. Like sometimes, like when you when you go to these spaces, some mm -hmm. some people really live in a box. Some people really don't have a lot of interaction with black people. People. So this kind of goes back into like media representation when you have mm. you know television shows like let's just say love and hip hop or you know television shows where we're drug dealers and pimps and things like that. Yes, these mediums are very enjoyable, but when you take somebody who is from suburbia who lives in this box who don't have representation or the variety mm. of representation from black people and they see that they automatically draw that you know stereotype. Same thing with uh, video games. If you know if black people are only featured in games that are about murder murdering, killing, stealing cars, and shooting people, that is going to be, whether subconsciously, that is going to be their ideal, what a black person is, when realistically, you know, we come in all, we come in all forms, so it's unfortunate, you know, the media has to do a better job with diversifying the image, and I think now, in this era, 2020, we do, we are getting closer to that visual variety, but yeah. definitely back then, in that era, like GameCube, PS2, it was, it wasn't there. <laughs> Mm, I definitely agree with you. I really do appreciate you bringing it up because that does help me see it from a whole nother perspective. A way that I can relate to that was um, growing up, I didn't really run into other melanated, melanated women gamers. I really didn't. So when it came to me wanting to be more involved into the gaming community, I did want to play with more women that are of my skin tone, you know? So I would literally, you know, I would Google black girl gamers. And mm -hmm. that's how I came upon the group, black girl gamers. Yeah. And yeah. 
when I joined that group, it opened my mind to a whole nother world. Like, like that Bruno Mars song, like, I was locked out of heaven. <laughs> I was like, yeah. where were all these goddesses before when I was growing up? And I'm just so appreciative now that I do have a community community but I am happy to say like I do have black girl gamers in my life because growing yeah. up not having that it kind of did make me think like I know that they're out there I'm like there's a million of us out there there has to be one yeah you know but it took me until 2019 to run into them mm -hmm. yeah I I totally agree with you um you know as even with me um just finally being on Twitch and things like that, I was actually a little surprised on how many uh, black girl gamers there is out there. Like it was yeah. really kind of shocking. I was like, really? I did not realize that there were so many women interested in this media. And now that they have a place that, you know, they can call a safe space and they have this community, we're now seeing more women come out like, yeah, I also like video games and I also like this and I also like that. But when I talk to them, a lot of times they felt they had to suppress that due to all the harassment and them being mm -hmm. the black women in video games. They didn't want to really put themselves out there. And I even, you know, seen women on Twitter say like, you know, I really contemplated quitting Twitch because of the harassment and the things I have to go through. But then oh, wow. you have to, re yeah, but yeah, then they remind themselves that they do have that safe space and the support system is there for women of color who wants to get into video games, so. I think it's great that we have that, but there's still mm -hmm. a lot of work that needs to be done as far oh, yeah. as the acceptance, you know, because I still feel like women, even though it's getting a lot better, it's still not where it needs to be as far as accepting women into the gaming community. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with you. I was watching the um, the Black Girl Gamers Summit the other day where Story Mo Babe, X Mira Mira, a couple of new... Um, I forget the other young woman's name, but where they were discussing their experience in the gaming space. And it was kind of a bit surreal just to hear it because I'm not going to like, because my experience was different, I am open-minded to other people's experience because I know just mm -hmm. because it didn't happen to me, it doesn't mean that it hasn't happened to everyone else. Absolutely. And hearing what they're going through and what they've been going through, and even in 2020, what they deal with, it's just kind of crazy because I'm just like, you know, as far as we've advanced in technology, as far as we came as civilization, we're still dealing with this. But it makes me happy that there is a safe space to where they can have this conversation and not worry about them having to, you know, keep it quiet or try to sugarcoat it. They can just be honest mm -hmm. and just give it to us raw about the experience that they have because they need, we need to have these stories. Yes. So that way we know that it is still going on and that there is work that still needs to be done, but progress is still being made. And that's what makes me even more happy. It makes me proud to be a black girl gamer. Yeah. And, and I don't feel like anybody should be feel like they can't be themselves on these platforms. So that's the ultimate message that I would love to get across to all of my followers. Um, and to anybody else who have, you know, female viewership or just women gamers in general, like it's okay. Like there are safe spaces out there and there are guys such as myself and other people who are very um, open and very, you know, loving to our female gaming partners in this, uh, in this community. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep. So anyway, kind of moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. So you are really big on mental health. Tell me a little bit mm -hmm. about that. Growing up, um, I went through a traumatic experience and it affected me to the point where I was suicidal mm -hmm. and I used to do self-harm. And I'm not going to say that I went through it alone, but a majority of the work that I went through, the mental work, it came from me having to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. And I understand that not everybody is as strong will minded as I am because depression, anxiety, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with, especially when you're dealing with it by yourself. So I want people to know that even if you're not having like a good day or like if things have just been a turnaround, it does get better, but it's also okay to not be okay in that moment. 
if you feel like you need to cry, if you feel like you want to get angry, don't shut out those emotions, but also be in control of those emotions and don't let them control you. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. And, um, you know, with uh, with mental health is something that, you know, I'm, I'm also passionate about. I also feel like, you know, especially in the age of social media and, you know, things going on in the world now and just things moving so fast. I think mental health is more important than ever nowadays. And I think also a very important thing is uh, allowing yourself to be open to people who are reaching out to you. You know, I always tell all of my followers, everybody that I know in real life, everybody that you can always reach out to me. Like if you feel like you just need to talk, my phone is on, my DMs are open, we can have that conversation. So it's uh, mental health is definitely something that has to be on the forefront, especially in 2020 where we have pandemics and we have, you know, so much, you know, the economy is going down and a lot of people are, are going through it. So, yeah. wow. Yeah. I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you, especially with social media, um, because I am one of those people, I get caught up in scrolling. I get caught mm -hmm. up in seeing all these other people's, um, I would say to me, making it seem like they're so much further than me in life when I don't even know their journey. I don't know what they had to do in order to get there. I just mm -hmm. see, I see them on their chapter 22. I see them on their chapter 65 and I'm on chapter two. And so it's kind of like when you feed yourself all of that, you begin to look at yourself and feel like you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And because you're not doing enough, you feel like you're not deserving of your success or what's the point of even trying? Like, look at this person, they're 18. They have their own house. They have two cars, they're a millionaires. And I'm someone who's still living with my parents at 25. And I realized mm -hmm. that I had to take a step back and I had to let myself know that I am on my own journey. Right. I can't compare my success and my failures to everyone else. Mm -hmm. But as you said, talking about it, it does help a lot. Um, but also sitting down with yourself and really getting to know who you really are beyond your trauma also helps as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And the thing about social media and I guess, I guess for when it comes to just kind of reading about this, I guess it affects men and women a slightly different. Um, I guess with the whole comparison thing, that's pretty universal. And mm -hmm. I always tell people you have to find your personal happiness because yes, said person over here can be a millionaire with a giant mansion and two cars, but who's to say that they're really happy? Or who's mm. to say that it's really theirs? Because a lot of people get caught up in the imagery of Instagram. You know, there, there's a lot of times where, you know, you see these Instagram posts and you think, wow, this person has a great, but you don't know if it's really an authentic thing that they're showing or they're just posting that for that. Cause you're just there for that still image. You don't know what mm -hmm. went into it. Like you said, I've seen people here in Houston, there's this uh, very high end mall called the Galleria. And so a lot of people go there to <laughs> pretty much flodge and, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you know, they do that. Right. But flex I have, the gram. yeah, yeah. Flex with the gram. Exactly. I have literally seen kids, young adults lean on a car that's not even theirs just to get a picture on Instagram and it winds up getting thousands of likes. So you can't necessarily believe everything that you see on social media. Um, but you also have to define, kind of going back, you have to kind of define what does happiness mean to you? Because who is to say if you get a million dollars or 20 million or 100 million that you're going to be happy? You know, money doesn't change you. It just makes you more than what you already are. So if you get more, it's just going to amplify all the insecurities that you already have. So Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, growing up... <laughs> My um my mom, she's Nigerian, so it was a typical, you have to be a lawyer or a doctor or you're just a disgrace to the family. Oh my God. So I always push, you know, get the perfect grades that I get. I always push to get the higher position, but it, it kind of got to the point where um, if I got oh an A, if I got an A in my class, you're fine. If I got an A in my class, my parents were just like, well, of course you're gonna get an A. You're supposed to get an A. If, let's say if I'm working at a job and within a week I got the manager position, they're like, okay, of course you're supposed to get the manager position. You're supposed to be successful. So I really had to 
define what success meant for me because my parents were always like, you're supposed to be great at what you do. You're not supposed to fail. If you fail, then what's the point of you even applying yourself? So I had to take a step back because I was pushing myself to get all these good grades. I was pushing myself to be the best at everything. But at the same time, I wasn't happy. I, I wasn't happy that I made honors. I wasn't happy that I was at the highest position at my job because it just felt like, you know, I'm supposed to do all of this. Mm-hmm. So what was the point of me even celebrating it if this was something that's supposed to come naturally to me? Yeah. So it took a lot of self-work and stepping down mm-hmm. and really understanding that, you know, what everybody wants what is needed for me mm-hmm. yeah and it's, it's always something that i drive home with my followers and of course everybody's situation is different so i'm not going to mm-hmm. speak for everyone but um i always tell my followers like you have to create your own path because at yeah. the end of the day you're going to be accountable for your success you know it is it's fine that you want to follow in your parents footsteps but at the same time you have to kind of formulate your own opinions and your own interests and your own uh just your own life in general you know i i I have to give a huge shout out to my mom because she allowed me to she allowed me to kind of go out and i don't want to say do whatever i wanted to do (laughs) but she never necessarily told me i can't do anything and if and Mm -hmm. if i made a mistake or if i got in some trouble it was all on me so Mm -hmm. and i feel like that allowed me to kind of realize like hey this is the path i want to go on this is a good thing this is not so i think it's always important to allow kids or you know people still in development to kind of find their own path and yes you're going to bump your head along the way i think a lot of times parents try to protect their kids from making mistakes or bumping their head but it's inevitable you know you're that is how you become stronger and that is how you learn from experiences so you can't sheltering your kids is good on paper but in real life it is not the move at all (laughs) yeah no because um the world out here it's it's rough (laughs) and now with the inclusion of technology i mean is i always say that you it's impossible to hide anything anymore because everything is out in the forefront if your kid has a smartphone the entire world is at his or her fingertips so Mm, yeah yeah Yeah. so it's always good to just have that education versus try to hide something and they find out anyway because then that ends in a terrible result as well so Mm. yeah that's true that is very true when you think about it because um when we were growing up social media wasn't as um as popping as it was (laughs) the most that i did on the internet is like i would go to like cartoon network or like mini clip or even newgrounds and just play different games that's really the most i ever did on the internet but now you know you get on so you literally have a computer at mm-hmm. the touch of your hands 24 7 so it is easy to get an information overload because you're exposed to so much you're exposed to so many different things it's kind of, it gets hard to really map out what you really want mm-hmm. but i always say oh my father always told me was to like you know um what was it take the meat and spit out the bones take you what go. you want from it <laughs> You know, just because you see this person doing amazing as a ballerina may not, that doesn't mean that you'll be great doing it, but learn from her lessons, learn from her success and her failures and apply that to your life and see where that will take you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As far as like the social media thing, I think for me is I've always kind of been on social media even as a kid i remember something as early as neopets or oh my god <laughs> or <laughs> i'll show my age right now but yeah like <laughs> like neopets and toontown and oh god then, then you had the myspace and aim era then you had twitter i think twitter is what really kind of changed the game for me but twitter and then later on facebook then instagram then we are where we at today where we have every social media platform under the sun but um but yeah yeah like you said information is plentiful now everything is thrown in your face and it's very easy to get that burnout so i always encourage people to take at least if you can if your business is not dependent on social media just cleanse yourself of it just take a week off i've started to get into the habit of just deleting social media apps off my phone temporarily and then just come back to it within a week so just to kind of 
reset and just kind of you know get the information overload out and just kind of come back to it after a week and see how i feel about things oh i i do the same thing (laughs) i definitely do the same thing um striving to be a content creator Mm -hmm. it gets kind of overwhelming when you're trying to make content for well for me speaking from my point of view trying to make it for gaming trying to make it for blogging trying to make it for fitness trying to make it for so many different things that it gets to the point where I feel mentally strained and that I have to take I just have to take a step back and just breathe and remember that there is a whole world going on mm-hmm. outside of my phone Oh yeah. And speaking of your content creation, that's a perfect segue. Um, when it comes to content creation, you do, you have expressed that you have interest in jumping into YouTube, not only for gaming, but for fitness, for blogging, for general interest, just everything under the sun. Um, how's that journey been for you? And what are some of the challenges that you face with content creation? <sighs> the journey, you know what? It's been like a roller coaster. It has its up moments, it has its down moments. Um, I would say the struggle for me would be consistency, mm. holding myself accountable, and also being honest with what I'm trying to do with my content and the person I'm trying to project onto the screen because I've done a couple YouTube videos Mm -hmm. where I speak on my life and I give advice from my experience Mm -hmm. and when it came to that it kind of like got to the point where I started just really thinking about um, where I'm going on my journey and it was kind of, it came to one of those things where it's like, uh, I don't feel like I have the right to tell my story right now. Maybe I should wait till my life, quote unquote, gets better or I get it all together and I just come back. So I'll stop that and then I'll be like, work out. So I'm like, you know what? I want to document this journey. Mm-hmm. And then it'll kind of like, you know, sometimes you fall off mm-hmm. <laughs> working out every now and then. So then I'll be like, oh, well, because I'm not working out, I can't you know post as much content as i want to then it'll come to gaming i'm like well how can i keep people like entertained how can i draw more people in how can i be more involved Mm -hmm. and it's like i'm trying to do so many different things instead of like being consistent with one thing and holding myself accountable for another thing Mm -hmm. and really trying to understand what i'm trying to do with the content those are the areas of where i struggle with And those are the areas that I'm really, I'm not going to say I'm going to have it all together, but it's just, it's something that I'm going to be, on. you know, Mm -hmm. being honest with myself. Mm -hmm. So you're saying for you, it's more so like holding yourself accountable and just finding that motivation to continue on whatever path that, you know, you want to document, whether it's your fitness journey, whether it's your life story, or even with gaming. Um, Is, I, I think with content creation, especially in the YouTube world, it is very time consuming. It is. It can be mm-hmm. very taxing and kind of double back into your mental health thing. You know, you also have to kind of find time to kind of disconnect because I get into like eight hour editing sessions and I'm just like, this oh, wow. can't be healthy for my health. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's broken up in between intervals, but still it's just like you spend all day making this content and you know, if you if some people have this thing where they don't see immediate results they feel like what the work that they're putting in is not worth it and that's definitely not true especially with youtube algorithms now like i would just say put your stuff out there eventually it'll stick you know i have videos that i posted months ago when it came out nothing but when i double back to it now it's like triple what it did prior so you just gotta keep yeah you just gotta keep just put it out there man just just gotta just put it out (laughs) (laughs) yeah because you know what it is is i feel like because everything is so instant at your Mm -hmm. fingertips and like, you know, you seeing everybody's success, but you're not knowing their journey. You mm. want the success, but you don't want to work for it. You know, everybody wants to be an overnight celebrity, an overnight superstar in everything that they do. Not realizing that it takes time. It takes work. You got to be patient with yourself. You got to be consistent, not consecutive. 
one of the things I really had to double down and learn because I would try to be like, okay, I'm a stream four days in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say like if I had to work really late and I missed that one day of streaming mm. because I wasn't being consecutive in my head, it equals to me not being consistent with my streaming mm. so i really had to understand the difference between you know okay if i miss this one day then that doesn't mean i can't make it up i just right. have to make time for it because i can be consistent but if i'm not consecutive that's all yeah, I, I feel you. And, you know, life happens. So, you know, you definitely don't want to neglect real life over, you know, Twitch and YouTube. And like you said, kind of going back to mental health, it can always kind of play a part into that as well. Um, where I, I mean, there's something where I miss streams entirely. And, you know, just like you, I feel bad about it, but that doesn't mean that you, like you said, you can't come back. If the people are going to support you, they're going to support you regardless. Whether you miss a stream for a day or even a week, you know, things happen. Life happens. And I think that, you know, your followers were really there for you. They will have an understanding of that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I definitely to my community because the people within my community, they're they're so amazing they really are yeah because there will be times where i don't stream <laughs> i don't stream for a week because you know i get burned out yeah and it's like i come back and it's like they all come back like nothing's happened like you know you're back we missed you you know we're here and it's kind of like you don't realize how much support you have behind mm. you until you are in a community like that nice. so it it does help like my community does help and they're the ones that encourage me and inspire me to keep going because I do have those times where uh, it's been like two weeks since I streamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm gonna press start broadcasting and there's not gonna be anybody here, but you know, I'm gonna keep doing it because this is, this is what I wanna do, yeah. you know? And the next thing I know, I got like 12 people in my, like 12 people in my chat talk about where you've been, we've missed you. And I'm just like, you guys, I could. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yep, yep. I feel that 100. percent Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, what is your goal overall with you know with Twitch? You know, I think for everybody, you know, everybody wants to build that community within Twitch. So, I think the goal with Twitch is kind of self-explanatory. But for your other side of content, the YouTube stuff, what is your overall goal with that, and where do you see yourself going with that? Hmm. <sighs> I see myself turning them into multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. And another thing is I want to use my platforms to be more vocal on mental health and to also be a representation that, you know, even if you feel like, you know, you may not be there all the way, you may not have it all together, or you feel like that, you know, you're not meant to be successful. You're not meant to do this. I just want to let you know that you can do it. You can do whatever your mind to. And I want to be a representation of that. And mm. also for people who are dealing with mental health issues, because I can only speak about depression and anxiety because mm. that's what I've dealt with. I want people out there to know that you're not alone. Even if I'm in another state from you or I'm in a whole nother continent, I just want you to know that. I'm here. And I also want to delve into um, financial literacy mm. because I do feel like learning how to manage our money is extremely important. Cause, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, you know, I want to I want to be able to give back to my family when I have family one day or even just to go on vacations or to help my family out. But I got to learn how to handle my money better first. Yeah. <laughs> I got to start small before I get to the big picture. So that's where I see myself going with my platform. Nice. So you definitely want to use your platform to not only entertain with your, you know, the video game content and, you know, share that community with people, but also wellness, financial literacy with, you know, with your fitness, with the wellness and financial literacy, but also mental health. And I think that is definitely needed, especially within our community. So I think what you're doing is awesome. You know, financial literacy is always interesting because, uh, I, I am very passionate about financial literacy myself, you know, as far as like investing and, you know, 401ks and learning, you know, IRAs and stuff like that. So it's very, I'm very looking forward to seeing what you're going to do in that space. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Because I'm just now um, 
really, really trying to crack down on my um, financial. I'm, I'm starting to do spreadsheets, which I never thought I would actually do. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually like tracking every penny. And it's, I realize that I am a terrible spender. Like I spend money sometimes and I don't really even realize like where it's going. Like I'll purchase stuff here and there. Then I look at my bank account and I'm surprised it's the amount that it is. But that's because I'm not tracking my spending. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think even Money with me, um, I think it's gotten worse since the pandemic started <laughs> because my overhead is not as big as it used to be. I don't have to pay for gas. I don't have to pay for work lunches and all these other things. So I think for mm. me, I've just been a little bit more lax when it comes to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, I think I've been pretty okay. You know, I, I try to track. I try to give myself a budget. I try to plan ahead of things. Like if I want to go like, on a vacation or something, I will, you know, write out all like you said a spreadsheet write out all the cost and just kind of save up to that point or kind of figure out okay i can put this towards this this month this towards that this month pay for this in advance and then by the time we get on vacation we'll have spending money for this so it's it, it's really good to stay organized when it comes to your financial health and you know yeah i totally agree mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah even if you may not you know it it takes time it's a skill that you have to develop it's not something that's going to happen overnight but the fact that you are consistently keep doing what you can do to improve it's going to build up it's going to build up over time so you know shout out to you shout out to your progress and your success because you're doing good i try (laughs) (laughs) so yo where can they find you um obviously i'm going to put all the links in the description but um obviously instagram but where else are you active well, you can find me on my Instagram at Celestial Gaming Goddess and my blogging Instagram, Be Free With Eve. There is no B E, just a normal little B, Free With Eve. And you can also find my YouTube channel, Be Free With Eve. Nice. Okay. See, I didn't know about the, the, the blogging Instagram and the YouTube channel, so I'm going to have to do follow that myself. Um, so, yeah, I will put all those links in the uh, the bio and description. The bio. The description down below. <laughs> So everybody who enjoyed this conversation, they can know where to find you or reach out to you. And also your Twitch. Is it also Celestial Goddess Gaming? Yes, it's well, Celestial Gaming Goddess. Goddess. So. There we go. I always get the GGs mixed up. Celestial <laughs> Goddess Gaming. No, Celestial oh my Gaming God. Goddess. Gaming Goddess. There we go. You have me rethinking <laughs> my name. <laughs> but y'all, it's been fun talking to you. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we get out? Um, yes, to everybody that is listening, you're amazing. Okay, shout out to you for getting as far as you did, for doing what you do, even if the most that you did today was get out of bed. You woke up. I'm proud of you. I'm supporting you. I'm encouraging you. And you got this. I believe in you. Aw. <laughs> I second that message. All right, y'all. Well, that's going to wrap up today's conversation. If you guys love this conversation, make sure you give her a follow. And I'll leave all the links down in the description down below. All right? (laughs) Bye, y'all. Bye.